Thank you. Uh, like Dr. Comisera said, by the way, my voice does not carry as well as it used to. So if you're sitting in the back, you might want to move up a little bit um, because it's difficult for me to strain my voice. Uh, yeah, like Dr. Comisera said, I have an interest in sport, sports since uh, I was old enough to appreciate uh, things uh, of that nature. In fact, uh, I am probably one of the very few people alive who actually remembers and can tell you scores and dates and all that when the Detroit Lions last won a championship. That's how far back I go. Long before the Super Bowl. Performance enhancing drugs or substances or methods. It's a whole bunch of stuff that we're going to talk about. Unfortunately, time, unless you give me that four or five hours, will not permit me to go into in depth in a lot of this, but if some questions do occur to you, uh, I will be happy to try to answer them for you. Uh, cheating in sports has gone, goes all the way back as far as we know. Uh, there's even records in ancient Greece where, of course, the first Olympics began that uh, people were trying to gain an edge through the use of various concoctions, uh, etc. But uh, let's fast forward to the modern Olympic Games. Um, there was a lot of cheating going on even back then. Much of it was undetected, some of it was. Some of it was so obvious it was difficult not to close your eyes to what was going on. Here's a good example of it. Uh, this is a guy named Thomas Hicks in the St. Louis Games in uh, 1904 who uh, ran the marathon, <clears throat> but along the way he flagged. That is, he was running out of energy. So he had a couple of friends going alongside him who kept him going by giving him some brandy and strychnine out in the open. Nobody uh, batted an eye about that. It was just the way things were done. Strychnine, as you know, uh, is a very toxic substance, CNS stimulant. And estimates are if he had gotten one more dose of strychnine, he never would have made it to the finish, but it would have been finished. Uh, and uh, here you see him coming across the finish line, being helped by a couple of his buddies. And actually, Hicks was not the first one to cross the finish line. He actually came across second, but was declared the winner because the person who came across first uh, was soon discovered to have used an automobile for part of the race. Uh, and <laughs> was disqualified. That is something that is not unheard of in modern day. We were reminiscing a while ago about uh, a uh, woman named Rosie Ruiz who won the Boston Marathon. <laughs> one, was it the New York Marathon, I think? Boston Marathon, one year. Uh, but she thought nothing of taking the subway, or the T, as they call it in Boston, uh, for part of <laughs> the trip. Uh, so it's nothing new. Uh, as the years went by, it was pretty well known that many athletes were using amphetamines. Amphetamines were first made available in the 1930s, and it was not uncommon for athletes 
to uh, use them to enhance their uh, athletic prowess. Unfortunately, some got caught doing it uh, in very catastrophic ways. And here we see two individuals, cyclists. Cyclists were well known for uh, using stimulants, amphetamines, throughout the 30s, 40s, and 50s. And here you see a couple uh, tragedies. On the left is uh, Knud Jensen, or Jensen, uh, a Danish cyclist who collapsed and died on the spot in the Rome Olympics in 1960. His body had uh, quite a bit of amphetamine in it. And then there was the case in the Tour de France in 1967 when one of the world-class cyclists, uh, champion, Tommy Simpson from the UK, died and also was found to have uh, uh, been subjected to cardiac arrest as a result of amphetamines and the strain, the strain of the race. Well, we're going to come back to the Tour de France because it never seems to get free of shenanigans on the part of the cyclists, as we will see. Um, a more recent situation is uh, in the, the one of Ben Johnson in the 1988 Olympics in Seoul, Korea. Uh, ben Johnson in the 100-meter dash, set a new world record of 9.79 seconds, beat even the great Carl Lewis uh, in that race. Uh, and I remember this very vividly. I remember even where I was when uh, that happened. He raced for Canada, and there were all kinds of accolades showered on him immediately after the race. But suddenly he disappeared. He was nowhere to be found. Well, the fact is that uh, it was discovered that he flunked the drug test. He was found to have an anabolic steroid known as stenozolol in his urine. And when that was disclosed shortly after the race, he got on a plane back to Canada incognito and went into hiding uh, afterwards, and uh, of course the IOC met immediately after that, stripped him of the record and the medal, uh, and uh, pretty much uh, finished out his career in disgrace. He was banned from any further competition uh, after that. Uh, here's another interesting story. I remember this one too, because I remember exactly where I was when uh, I heard this uh, on the radio back in the 1972 Olympics uh, in Munich, which were probably known for the tragedy of the uh, Israeli wrestling team in the Munich Games. But one of the uh, uh, things that the Munich Games is noted for also was what happened to this young man, Rick DeMont, young kid from Ohio. When I do mean kid, he was only 16 years old and had just passed his 16th birthday. He won the 400-meter freestyle in record time, world record time. And shortly after his victory, the bulletins came out that he was disqualified. And he was disqualified because they found a, in his system a drug, which was uh, ephedrine, actually, used to treat his asthma. And they said this was illegal. Well, the fact was and there were records, and he could prove it, that he had told 
the committee that he was asthmatic, he was taking ephedrine, it was approved, so everybody, you know, had the records were there that it was approved, but they still took his medal away. A real tragedy. Uh, it took until 2001 for the IOC to admit that it had made a mistake, but it didn't return his medal. It kept he still, to this day, he's a swimming coach at the University of Arizona, uh, has not received his medal. Uh, 